Coming up now on Animal Outtakes. I think she's going to be a wonderful help as, uh, as we go forward. We'll meet some dogs who are helping their owners by using one of their keen senses, their ears. See, they'll kind of tilt sideways. They have an inverted beak that helps them with that in the water. There is no mistake in the flamingo. And this bright colored bird has some brilliant characteristics too. They're generally smaller. These as adults get to be about six foot, six foot six maybe. Females three and a half to four feet long, this particular caiman. We get up close with a species of crocodilian that is invasive to Florida. This and much more straight ahead on Animal Outtakes. Hello and welcome to Animal Outtakes. I'm Marsha Panucci and this is my best friend Zeus. We've heard how good a dog's hearing is. They can hear nearly four times the distance as us and at a higher frequency too. And it's excellent hearing that the dogs we are about to meet use to help their owners who have hearing loss. These small four-legged graduates of the Florida Dog Guides for the Deaf are having a huge impact on the lives of their owners. There are situations where it's dangerous not to hear, um, like the smoke alarm. Yes. Right, like somebody coming to the door. I did have a dog that was trained, fully trained, and he did warn me when I set the house on fire. Uh -huh. Not on purpose, of course. Oh, absolutely <laughs> not. The bacon. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bacon gotcha, huh? <laughs> right. And he was there to alert us. The Hearing Therapy Dog Training Program started here more than 30 years ago by Facility Director Robin Waltz's mother. And it is a mission the staff and volunteers here continue. Why did she want to start something like this? Well, um, back in 1984, my mom saw a vision um, in her head as far as she wanted to help the deaf community. There wasn't a program here local that helped anyone who had hearing issues. Um, she was a Manatee County School Bus Monitor for the deaf children, and she had to make the choice of either the dog school or the, the kids on the bus. Um, the school wouldn't be where it is right now if it weren't for her making this choice. Um, unfortunately, she passed away in August of 2015, and we are carrying on her legacy and hoping to make it bigger and brighter than she ever even imagined. What makes a dog a good hearing therapy dog? Okay, first, first thing we do is we do give them a temperament test. We find out whether the dog is going to be able to handle the type of training that they're going to be put through, um, and that takes a lot of the dog being in tune with the person. Uh, we try to use dogs that are already in the home because they've already got that bond. If they don't have a dog already in the home, we do reach out to our local animal shelters and rescue groups. Um, we will go to that facility, we will give the temperament test, uh, see if the person that's needing the dog likes the dog and thinks that they can build them on, and then we give them a time to get that bond together before they even start doing any of the training. Is size important at all of the dog? Not with the hearing. With the, the hearing, you can get a dog from a teacup chihuahua to a Great Dane to be trainable to take a hearing impaired person to the door, to the phone, uh, to the alarm clock. These dogs are helping their owners function on a daily basis, but they're also being much more than a set of ears. She's just everything to me. She, I've had dogs all my life, but I've never, never had a service dog and it's just amazing how much they fulfill your heart. She just, uh, I don't know, she's just my life. I don't, I don't know what to tell <laughs> you. She's your soulmate. Yes, she is, she is, she's my best buddy. She's now a member of the family, so she's uh, one of us, so. As, as far as uh, from the hearing perspective, uh, we're working on that right now, but I think she's gonna be a wonderful help as, uh, as we go forward. It's watching these people's lives transformed. Um, we have seen people that 
they stay in their house. They're afraid to go outside. All of a sudden, this dog gives them confidence and they're able to go out and they're able to drive and they're able to go to stores and it just opens up a whole new world for them. And to see that happen and know that we had a part in that, that's where our, our heart is and that's where it's gonna they stay. They get their freedom back. They do. And their dignity. They do, they do. And that's priceless. It is priceless. So whether I'm with someone or alone, Jolie is there to you know, keep me on schedule. We've just, um, we bonded in a way that's very unusual, I think. And, you know, she's, uh, she lights up my life. And we just love each other. I lost my husband a year and a half ago. And Buddy has become my companion, um, my sidekick, whatever you want to call it. He's there all the time. He sits on my lap. When he, when I cough, he comes over to see what's wrong, see if I'm okay. So he's very tuned in to you now, yes. right? Yes, he is, very much so. Florida Dog Guides not only train a wide range of therapy dogs, but also service dogs for veterans as well. And again, if a dog is not already in the home, then staff and recipients visit local shelters and find a dog there giving the dogs and their new owners, well, you could say a whole new outlook on life. The word flamingo comes from the Spanish word flamenco, meaning fire. And it's the intensity or the glow of these birds that help give them their name. That gorgeous pink color makes flamingos easy to spot. So we are doing some feeding with these guys. As you can see, they are very motivated. Here at Sarasota's Jungle Gardens in Florida, visitors get a chance to get up close with these colorful birds. So flamingos are native to Florida. A lot of people, when they think of Florida, they're gonna think of flamingos. Um, we are still one of the only places in the state that you can walk up to a flamingo and be able to hand feed it. So it's kind of cool to be able to walk around with them, interact with them, um, get to see up close their bright coloring. And that coloring can be a vibrant pink. And if you've ever heard the saying, you are what you eat, well, that certainly applies to them. One of the most interesting things about flamingos is that when they eat their shrimp, that's, what they, that's how they take in their coloration. So that's how they get these super bright pink colors. Um, here at the gardens, we don't have that shrimp for them. We actually have a special flamingo food that has all of their nutrients and keratin in it to allow them to keep that bright color. Um, one of the also interesting things about it is that they are filter feeders, similar to a baleen whale. So they have soft, pl soft plates on their tongue and they will stick their head upside down and filter feed through the water and take in their food that way. And then those um, rakers will help filter out the food that they need. Another unique feature the flamingo has, its long legs. You often see them standing on just one of them. Taking a closer look, you see what looks like a backward bending knee. That's really the bird's ankle. Their knee is actually hard to spot, hidden up close to the body and usually under the feathers. Spring has sprung here at the gardens. So we have Flamingo Island back there and we are hoping that they are gonna maybe have some babies for us. If you're here at, during the springtime, you can actually see them do some of their courting dances for each other. So that's pretty neat to see. Flamingos are said to be monogamous, mating with one partner for life. Within a flamingo colony, when it comes time to mate, all birds will participate, so there will be an abundance of offspring at the same time. I think one of the most important things about protecting animals and interacting with animals is you get to have these up close interactions with them. You know, I as a kid would go to zoos and that's what inspired me to want to work with animals and protect the animals and be with them. If you don't have those experiences, you know, what is gonna make you wanna go out and be like, I'm gonna, you know, protect these flamingos because I remember I gotta feed them when they, you know, when I was a kid. So having that up close interaction really kind of inspire a person to help, I think. There are six different species of flamingos throughout the world. One species that is on the decline 
the plastic lawn flamingo. And I think we would all agree on that one, you just don't see them like you used to. As I go down her back, boy, let me tell you, she's solid. She's very she's solid. She's solid. Would you like to give her a hold there? Well, maybe. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand her to you this way so she doesn't look at the water. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like yes. that for you okay. so you can kind of feel her weight. Now, this is one big baby. No, this is not an alligator or a crocodile. This is called a caiman. And we will find out more about this crocodilian reptile next. For thousands of years, we've been human's best friend. You've been through a lot, and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization, so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org. Thanks for staying with us. They won't get nearly as big as the American alligator or crocodile. The spectacled caiman are typically about six feet long. While it's considered a relatively small crocodilian, it still is a huge predator. Troy, you have a new friend here. I do, this is a spectacled caiman. Caiman versus crocodile. And an alligator. Oh. And so. gharial. There's a bunch of different things. This is a caiman. Um, they live in South America generally, but they are an invasive species to Florida. They came in years ago, and, and there's a lot of speculation on it, so I'd be lying if I said exactly how they got here, because I wouldn't know. They are able to swim. They're very, very highly tolerant of salt water, so they can oh. migrate like the American crocodile so they can get around. Pet trade, releasing, they're not endangered, they breed very well, and they breed very rapid. So they become an epidemic in South Florida where they're pretty invasive and they're down there a lot. Now, they're dangerous. Yes, ma'am. Are they more dangerous than the American croc or are they about on the same level? I would say um, <clears throat> that's a really hard statement to make. American crocodiles can be dangerous if you mess with them. As a general rule, American crocodiles will leave you alone. There's not a lot of attacks on record. Uh, caimans are the same way. They're aggressive when they're handled, apprehended, or messed with. So if you see a caiman, alligator, or croc and you don't bother it, generally, as a general rule, it will flee but they can be dangerous. <laughs> She's been eyeing me <laughs> since we've been standing here. What is the keenest sense on this particular the, the keenest sense on them is as far as what's the strongest part yes. they have. Um, their eyesight is extremely well. They have cones and they can see very, very vivid color. So they, their eyesight, their smell, and if you look at all these little beads in the front, Oh, See these little dots? Yes, yes, those, yes. Are water, those are receptors. So if something starts tapping the water near it, it can actually sense that and pick it up. These are its ears. Uh -huh. So they flap, they can hear real well, and they'll lift them up. When they go into water, they're airtight. I mean, they're airtight. And they're called a spectacled caiman because you see the little specks on top of their eyes? Sure. They have two little points right there. And you notice how brave we are because that snout is banded. Thank you, Troy, for doing that for well, us. Well, it's not so much that I did it for you guys. That's actually a law. I am a class one, class two permittee for crocodilians. And when you take something like this out into the general public to talk to you, we have to do this. This is a law. You cannot have it untaped. Now, if I was working at my own facility and you were safe, I wouldn't have to do it. Another thing is it keeps it safe and you safe and everything in between and nobody gets hurt that way. And this does not hurt the animal at all. That's strictly electrical tape. It comes right off when it's wet, doesn't stick to them. And the minute I put it back, I take it off. We've heard about the powerful jaws yes. of a crocodile. That's banded with electrical tape. Right. Has they ever broken out of that tape? Not that I've had experience with. Um, they would be able to get it caught on something and pull it out. But as far as an opening the mouth of a crocodilian, opening its mouth is not anywhere near the come down pressure on it. So you could actually take your finger and hold with this much strength the mouth shut, but you're not going to do that with it closing. 
I want to go back to the eyes, Troy. Okay. These eyes are just a beautiful green, obviously, to be camouflaged in the water. But there's a slit of black. What is that slit? <clears throat> it's their pupil. They're nocturnal. So these animals will lay around real lethargic all day and get sun, and then at night they go out for the kill. And they hunt whatever they can. Water, and, uh, fish, frogs, salamanders, and then as they get bigger, birds, mammals that come to drink, little deers, possums, raccoons. The spectacled caimans found in South Florida are believed to have been released or escaped from the pet trade. According to Florida Fish and Wildlife, the spectacled caiman was first spotted back in the 1960s, and they are still found today to be breeding and self-sustaining. Sweet! How would you like yelling this every day? Well, if you have one of these little porkers as a pet, you could. We all know pigs love to eat, but did you also know they are pretty intelligent animals? Dr. Don tells us all about piggies next. Animal Outtakes is produced by Dante's Den Foundation, a nonprofit group dedicated to creating the best life for dogs. If you would like to learn more about Dante's Den, donate or volunteer, visit our website, dantesden.org. Let's see, this little piggy went to market and this little piggy stayed at home. That's right, pigs as pets. These animals aren't just found on farms anymore. Some folks are keeping them as their animal companions. But do these porkers really make good pets? Dr. Don tells us more in this week's Pet of the Week. Dr. Don, usually when we see a stroller like this, there's a little puppy coming out of it, but oh my goodness, there's a little piggy coming out of this. Tell us about Dottie. Well, you're right, this is a pig. This is actually a mini pig, and she's about three months old, and she was just in to get spayed the other day, and she was just so cute and personal, you just had to have her on display here. So this is her debut? This is her debut. Okay. And there are about 50 different kinds of pigs they call mini pigs, and some are not quite as many as others, <laughs> and they all grow. Your basic everyday pig pig that you'd buy like at the grocery store to eat, that pig, usually in around four months, is around 200 pounds. They grow very fast, and if left alone, that pig can be 1,000 pounds or more. So when you have a mini pig, well, it only grows 60 pounds or more, it's still a strong of animal. And they can live, you take care of them, right, 20 to 25 years. So now you got to ask yourself, your 13-year-old kid really wants a miniature pig, and you get it to him. In four years, they're going to discover boys or girls, and often they're pigs. Uh, or they're 18, and they go off to college. Well, there you go. Have a pig, Mom. But Dr. Dot. Yes? Pigs, as a pet. They are smart, sometimes too smart. They're easily as smart as a German Shepherd. You can teach them to do stuff, and they're strong. And they're also strong-willed. 
And keep in mind, they hit puberty early, so you want to spay them and neuter them when they're around three months or four months of age, or else it's going to be really, really nasty. So, But where do you keep them? Is, is this an indoor pig or is this I an outdoor would, pig? I think all pigs really like to be outdoors. They like to have a pen where they're out of the weather. They can get out of the sun, they can get out of the rain, they can get out of wind, yet they can actually go out there and feel, you know, feel the sun and feel the dirt under their toes. If they're kept indoors, and I do have people that have indoor pigs and they let themselves out. Uh, often like hoofs get kind of overgrown, uh -huh. we have to do hoof trimming all the time. And also, they're strong and they're smart. So I've had people come home to find their refrigerator moved to the middle of the room, oh. <laughs> their door open and everything from here down cleaned out. Ah. I've had, they will open up your oven and look for food. These things are very smart and they're strong and they're not for everybody. Now Dottie they, is about, how, how much does she weigh right now? Oh, right now she's about 20 pounds. They always weigh more than they look. Like I can see, I can look at a dog and tell you how much it weighs, but a pig just double it because they're so dense. Wait till you see the next pig. And that is my question. Now, can you show us just how big Dottie may get? Sure thing. Let me. <laughs> Sometimes they're not. Hi, that... Wilbur. Now this Dr. Don is Wilbur. This is Wilbur. He's two years old. Two years old. And how much does this baby weigh? Good question. I have a walk-on scale and I'll get you an exact, but I bet you by looking at him, he's, I was going to say around 85 pounds. He's 84 point something pounds. Now when will he solid stop? muscle. When will he stop growing? They kind of continue growing. And he's as sweet and gentle as can be. Life. And yes. we're feeding him little pieces of apple that here. Little piece of apple. We want low fat stuff because they also go, baby. tend to get obese. And if they get obese, they're going to get arthritis. And they're going to all the maladies of 500 pound people, which is not good. This tail is wagging like crazy, so things are going real well for Wilbur right now. But you're saying he's going to keep eating and he's going to keep growing. Right. And just like any animal, before you bring home a little piggy, Dr. Don says, do your research. Make sure that they are the right pet for you. And also check with the county and city that you live in. Some areas don't allow pigs and have zoning rules. So you want to make sure a pig is legal to have in your area. Coming up next, our very own Dr. Dog talks about the all important toys. Welcome back. Now we go to one of our wonderful vets who's going to talk to us about toys. Are they safe and 
which ones we should buy. Well, one, there's so many toys out there, it's hard to kind of give you a, a perfect example, but one of the things you want to make sure you're not, your dog cannot ingest a toy because uh, one of the more common problems we have in terms of having to have uh, surgical extraction is with uh, some undigestible problem, be it a, uh, a toy. We've, we've retrieved things such as dolls and of course socks are more more common thing because sometimes people use you know socks to kind of uh, allow an animal to play with, bad idea. Any small toy, you want to use something large that they can gnaw on, it's not going to break up. People use uh, rawhide sometimes, I'm a little concerned with rawhide because especially with the knobs on the end, if large dogs can chew them, they, they can't digest them and it can cause impaction. So it's really common sense, you know, so a specific type of toy and of course the, um, the toys that allow an animal to, to, to play with them and allow them to eat out of the, out of the what do they call those things? I forgot the, the names. The Kongs. The Kongs, thank you. Mm -hmm. The Kongs, they're, they're very good for them because it gives them something to play with and they get a reward if they're playing and active and they can't really hurt themselves. Make sure that as soon as they start showing symptoms of, first of all, they stop eating. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they start vomiting. You know, a day or something like is okay because a lot of people, a lot of animals have in a dietary indiscretion, they'll eat things, they'll pick up things off the floor and it's just passive, no problem. But once it's, it's gone on for more than a day, an animal's lethargic, you really want to consult with your veterinarian uh, because oftentimes these things go undetected. There can even, even be partial blockages which can go on for days. So you have to be very in tune with your pet and ask questions, call your veterinarian at the earliest symptoms so that they can monitor what's going on and make sure that everything's going to resolve on its own or maybe they can give you some suggestions. Better, better to be you know, um, early on these things than waiting too long. Sometimes I tell my clients all the time, you, you're not bothering us, call us. That's what we're here for. Great advice from the doc as usual. We hope you've had fun and learned a thing or two along the way. Zeus and I will be back here again next week with even more animals and some wild adventures. Until then, thanks for watching. They won't get nearly as big as the American alligator or crocodile. The, sp the spectacled? Okay, okay. The speckled caiman are spectacled. Got it the American alligator or crocodile. The speckled caiman are... You know, that's not right, is it? The spectacled. All right, one more time. No, shoot. Spectacled. Spectacled. Okay, but that's okay. The spectacled. Spect spectacled. I thought I did the suey pretty good. Yes, I did. <laughs>